class, we will now take a look at electrocyclic reactions. And in electrocyclic reactions, what happens is we have a conjugated system and we only have one molecule. And it cyclizes to form a cyclic compound. <coughs> and you can see that with that example that I'm hovering over. And you can see it with this example. But notice one thing. Do you see how the equilibrium arrows are different? Well, the one on top is favored to form the product because what are we doing? We are trading one pi bond for a sigma bond. And we have learned that sigma bonds are stronger. So this is thermodynamically favorable or energetically favorable, put it that way. Whereas in this bottom one, we are trading one pi bond for a sigma bond right here. That is true. But now it adds another, there's another layer of complexity that we need to consider, and that is angle strain. Because we've learned in Orgo 1 that a four-membered ring is not the most stable due to angle strain. And so equilibrium favors the reactants in this case. But for both of them, Overall, what you're doing is you're trading a pi bond for a sigma bond, and typically that's favorable. But you also have to consider angle strain as well. You can see the arrows there showing us the mechanism of how this occurs. Now, here's an example which is quite interesting. Okay. So when we look at that top starting material, what do we see? When it goes to the product, we notice that the two methyl groups, labeled in red, are cis to one another. And then when we look at this one on the, let's see, this one on the bottom there, and we look at when we add some heat, do we see how now they're trans to one another? So we can see here, if we can relate this back to the dills alder reactions, do you see how these guys right here are on the outside? And so that means they have to be on the same side when it cyclizes. You can see right there on the same side. And then here we have an outside and an inside, and it get, tells us that they're going to be on opposite sides. It kind of is relatable to the Dills Alder. But then things kind of fall apart when you take that compound and uh, initiate the cyclization reaction by using light. Now it doesn't follow the same trend as the Dills Alder. Those are both outside, but when you initiate the reaction with light, they are now trans to one another. So this was very, very interesting and confusing at the time scientists was looking at this. They couldn't figure it out. So what, what they knew at the time was, okay, the stereochemistry here in the starting material determines what the product's going to look like. And it depended on if you used heat or light. So we have two major components here that's going to influence what the product is going to look like at the end of the reaction. But what's kind of confusing here is when you draw the mechanism. Okay, Look at this. So if I draw a mechanism like this, okay, So that's the mechanism. So that mechanism right there gives us, it does, well, what it does, that mechanism that I just drew there is the same if you used heat or light. The mechanism itself does not help us understand the stereochemistry. Okay. The mechanism only helps us understand how the bonds are forming or what bonds are forming. 
Okay. Now, this was very confusing until Woodward and Hoffman came along, two very, very important scientists came along, and they, what they did was they're like, okay, we have to use orbital theory to help explain this phenomenon. Okay. And so that's what they did. Okay. So that's what we're going to kind of jump into is looking at these Woodward and Hoffman rules, as we call them, and they help us to understand the stereochemical outcome of these reactions. It's really neat. Okay. But before we get into that, I want to show you another example here where let's focus our attention here. Okay. So we're looking at that. We're going to look at the heat do the reaction with heat, and we see that's outside, outside. So we are anticipating, because we're using heat, that these two substituents in red are going to be on the same side of the ring because we've seen it in Dill's Alder reactions, and we've seen it with this guy, right? But look at this. We use heat. They're on this, both outside, and then... They are trans in the product. So it's like, what, what's going on here? It's very hard to find a correlation here. But if I take this molecule and do, treat it with light, they're now cis to one another? Okay. What is going on here? Woodward and Hoffman use this right here to help explain what is happening. It's the conservation of orbital symmetry. What do the orbitals look like? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the MOs for this, these molecules right here and these molecules right here. And we're going to compare the MOs and look at how they're reacting and how these orbitals are interacting. And that's going to help explain the stereochemistry in our products. So let's first consider our compound that looks like this. And we see that starting material has six pi electrons and it has three conjugated bonds. Right. Now we can see here, we're just, this is a review, outside, outside, make some uh cis okay when we use heat we see here outside inside so that we expect them to be trans in the ring okay now these reactions it says heat that you can add heat to make these things go but some electrocyclic reactions don't require that much heat it could be just room temperature or even slightly below room temperature and some reactions will work just fine and that's because at room temperature, there's enough thermal energy for the reaction to proceed. Okay. So why are we getting cis and trans? Okay. Well, what we have to do is that we have to look at the HOMO. So that's what the molecular orbital looks like, or the HOMO molecular orbital looks like. And then we are going to kind of simplify it and stick those pi orbitals on our molecule. Okay. So that right there that I'm circling is this guy right there. And how do I know that? Because I'm looking at the substituents. I'm looking at these two right here. Okay. And you see here, there they are. They're both on the outside. And these hydrogens right here on, are on the inside. So I know that this image right here is that one right there. Okay. Now what bond are we going to be forming? Okay. Let me be more specific. What sigma bond are we going to be forming? It's going to be between this carbon and that carbon. All right. We're going to form that bond right there. Okay. So what has to happen in order for those that bond to form? Well, 
these pi electrons or these pi orbitals have to interact with one another. So that means that these, these orbitals right here have to rotate and interact with one another. And the way that they rotate is important. So if you look at my thumbs right here, okay, and my, my thumbs here represent the two orbitals right here, okay? Now these orbitals, in order to react or interact, sorry, they could rotate like this, or they could rotate like this. Do you see the difference? Let me do it again. They could rotate like this, or they can rotate like this to interact. Okay? And the way that they rotate determines the stereochemistry of the molecule. But the way it's going to overlap is we want the phases to overlap. So we want red to overlap with red. And so how is that going to rotate to make sure that overlaps? That's what this slide is going to show us. So if this p orbital rotates counterclockwise and this p orbital rotates count or clockwise, then you can see that they are going to interact. And so when these orbitals rotate in a counterclockwise and a clockwise direction, we call that disrotatory. Okay. So if you go back to my thumb example, a disrotatory rotation would look like this. Okay. And when it rotates in a disrotatory fashion, do you see how that this methyl group right here is going to rotate down? And then this methyl group is also going to rotate down. So they are cis to one another. Isn't that cool? Now, in order for this to happen, you have to add heat. Okay. Now let's take a look at the cyclization of a four pi electron system with two conjugated bonds, like right here. Okay. Now, overview, we can see here that this is opposite of when we had a six pi electron system. These are outside, and then they're trans in the product. That's an inside, that's an outside, and now they are cis. So that's completely opposite from the previous example that I just showed you. So let's take a look at the homos or the homo of that guy right there. Okay. How do I know that's that compound? Because look at the methyl groups right here. They're both on the outside. Okay. So this is the MO and this is kind of a, applying that to the molecule so we can actually see it a little bit better. Okay. Now both of these are on the outside, but, but notice now, do you see how we have a blue phase and a blue phase on opposite sides and a red and a red on opposite phases or sides of the ring. But when we compared it, this one, do you see how the two red lobes are on the same side? The HOMO between the 6 pi electron system, shown here, looks differently than the one with the 4 pi electrons. And so in, what we still want to do, though, is to make sure the red and the red interact with one another. And so how does it rotate to accomplish that? It rotates in a conrotatory fashion in which both orbitals rotate in a the same direction and in this case the clockwise direction so if you go back to my thumb example that would be like this okay <clears throat> so the key point is that they rotate in the same direction Okay. And when they rotate in the same direction, 
they are going to have the overlap. And you can see when that happens, right, this guy's going to go down and this guy's going to go up. So you can see that they are now on opposite sides of the ring. Isn't that so cool? Okay, so this right here is just a summary slide of everything that we've talked about. So two things that you need to be aware of and always remember that you have the amount of pi electrons that you have to consider. And are you using thermo energy or photochemical energy? So the thermo would be heat. And the photochemical would be light. So if you're using heat, if you have four pi electrons, it's going to rotate in a conrotatory fashion. If you have six electrons, it's going to rotate in a disrotatory fashion. And in the next video, we are going to then now look at when you do it with light. Do you see how they have switched? So we want to understand why have they all of a sudden switched. Okay, so that will be in our next video.